with that in mind, let me just talk to us for a moment from these words. I want to talk to us from these words. Availability versus ability. Availability versus ability. Now somebody said, well, Pastor, why are you opening up with that? For this reason. We need to know that we are available for God to get the glory out of our story. There are those who can boast about their ability. But are you available? Because God is not as interested in your ability as he is in your availability. Now, if you know that you were not available as you could have been in 23, don't worry about that because that's behind you now. But God has given all of us another chance to show that we are available for his glory, mm -hmm. for his usage. We are available to do the things of the kingdom and not the things of the world. We are available to walk by faith and not by fear. We are available to say, Lord, if you can use anything, use me. So again, it's availability versus ability. Mm -hmm. Now let me open up with this and then we're going to give you a few texts of scripture. But someone once said, God is far more interested in my availability than he is my ability. Amen. You're going to run into folk that can tell you all kind of things that they're able to do. Mm -hmm. But if you follow up with this question, are you available for God to use what you have for his glory? See, we've got to know this, and, and, and I'm glad you're quiet because one of our parishes always tell me, Pastor, that means we're listening. So I hope we're listening because we need to examine don't look at your neighbor. You need to look at yourself mm -hmm. and say, Lord, have I been available well. for you to use me? Mm. Have I been available Amen. for you to get the glory out of my story? Yes. Have I been available to pray when then nobody else want to pray? Yes. Have I been available to give when then nobody else want to give? And I'm not just talking about finances. I'm talking about the give of your time and of your Oh, 
availability versus ability. To be available means that when God leads you, you are willing to set everything else aside. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you will do it at a moment's notice. You won't have to have no meat. You won't call no proud meat. You won't have no meat. You won't say, meet the here. Let's go over this. But when God says, when you're available, you get to move it. Now, sometimes people are going to say, I don't know why they're doing that. You, you don't have to give no whole lot of long answers. Just say, because I'm available right. for the use of God. And then leave them with this. Question mark. What about you? Mm -hmm. <laughs> huh? All right. At a moment's notice, whatever you're doing, a planning so that you can do what he wants done. Nehemiah, chapter number one. Okay. Now watch this. Nehemiah, chapter number one. The words of Nehemiah, the son of Hakiah, and it came to pass in the month of Chislu, in the twentieth year, as it was in Shushan, the palace, that Hanani, one of my brethren, came, he and certain men of Judah, and I asked them concerning the Jews that had escaped, which were left of the captivity, and concerning Jerusalem. Now all that means, one and two says, that here comes a folk going to give Nehemiah a report of what's going on back at the homeland. Stay with me. And they said to, to me, unto me, the remnant that are left of the captivity therein and the providence are in great affliction and reproach. The wall of Jerusalem also is broken down, and the gates thereof are burnt with fire. Verse 3 simply says, they're in distress. <laughs> Have any of you ever gotten a call with somebody's in distress? Yeah, they were in distress. And it came to pass when I heard these words that I sat down. Now watch this. Watch what Nehemiah did. He sat down and wept and mourned. Certain days. Now wait a minute. Let me stop there for a moment. Jesus said in Matthew chapter 5, Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. We need to get understanding on that. That's not talking about when somebody done die. That when you have heard that your brother, your sister in Christ is in distress, you ought to mourn over that. There ought to be some weeping because they're going through. The Bible says that we should rejoice with those that rejoice. And weep with those that weep. Don't miss this. Still talking about availability now. Versus ability. Watch what he says. And it came to pass when I heard these things. I sat down and wept. And watch this. I mourned. I mourned certain days. And fasted. Now wait a minute. He fasted. Meaning he set self things aside. See sometimes people are fasting because they said I'm going to lose some weight. I want to detox my body. But the fasting that scripture is talking about is not about that. The fasting that scripture talks about is when we take everything out of the way that's in the way that's keeping us from hearing God. Availability versus ability. So the Bible says he fasted and prayed uh -oh, before the God of heaven. Now let me say this. I want to give us four bullet points right. on availability versus ability. When you are available to God, not your ability, when you hear, number one, that there are things happening in the body of Christ that's displeasing. And can I just say this? If any of you are on social media, you are already walking with me. Because we got a lot of stuff going on on social media concerning the body of Christ. <coughs> I said we got a lot. But now who's available to do something about it so that God can be glorified? You will not avail yourself until you first understand this. That when you hear it, it should bring some weeping. I don't know about anybody else, but I, I, I have a few of you all that I talk with more than others. And that don't mean that nobody's no more special to pass it anybody else. That just means that we communicate a little bit more. And some of us have been talking about these things that are going on. And in my own way, I didn't do it on the phone with some others, but I sat in my back room. 
I sat in my prayer room. I sat in any room. I sat in the car and I wept. I said, Lord, have mercy. But watch this. A lot of times when we say, Lord, have mercy, you might hear, well, are you available to do something about it? Mm. Now, you may not can do something about those persons, but are you available to do something so that you don't end up like those persons? Yeah. 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 <laughs> I said, Lord, I'm available. Because <laughs> I tell you, I don't want to end up. Come on, somebody. It's a rough stuff, and I'm not going to go into details, but you check it out. You got you have social media. You got contact, and you know, people. Just, just check out some things that are happening. It should call us to weep and say, Lord, I'm available. Mm -hmm. I have the ability that you gave me. I can make a difference and not a mess. See, this is why Jesus said in Matthew 5 and 16, check me, check He said, let your light so shine before me. That they'll see your good works and glorify the Father in heaven. Are you available to make a difference? You gotta let your light shine. You gotta let your light shine. Not just in the building, not just by way of social media, but when the media is not on, when the building is not open, are you gonna let your light shine? And when you hear these distressful things, are you going to weep and say, God, I'm available to make a difference? Nehemiah wept. The next thing he did, he mourned. He mourned. He was so concerned about it until it got a hold of his inner man. We should be so available to when we hear all of these toxic things and corrupt things that are going on in the body of Christ. We should mourn about it. It should reach our inner man. It should reach the God in us that calls us to mourn. Now wait a minute, somebody said, well, Pastor, I didn't need a mile to day. So I don't understand the walls burnt down. But in this day, we got relationships burning down. Amen. Amen. I say in this day, we got children killing their parents. Yeah. That's a burn down. Yeah. I say that's a burn down. Is anyone available when we got folk going through mental illness? Yeah. Who is available to say I pray? For the mind. Here we are in 24. Are we just going to go through like we did in 23 and act like everything? Somebody told me one time, don't never think things going to go away because you don't address them. Right. Yeah. They're going to go away. Stop that going to sleep and wake up and say, ooh, everything is good. No, because there's whatever you went to sleep with, not tap me on your shoulder. Say, hello, I'm still here. Are you going to deal with it? Amen. Are you available to be used? For God's glory to deal with these things that we got going on. Political mayhem. Financial issues are happening. Who is available? I got a degree in political science. What are you using it for? Can God use you in your degree? For his glory? He made it possible. No, I'm just smart enough. Really? Watch this, watch this. All right, then the, the third thing is, first we, we then we mourn, and watch this, and then he fasted. See, when you're available with your abilities, you got to fast, you got to put everything else out the way and say, God, all right, I'm setting everything else aside. Come on, somebody. I'm setting everything else aside because I now need to hear from you because I'm available. I now need your instructions. Mm -hmm. So I can't allow everything else to cloud my hearing from God. I got to fast. Sometimes, now please hear me with your spiritual heart. And, and please hear me. I'm not I'm not uh, throwing uh, chalk and rock and hot in my hand. Please hear me. Sometimes we need to fast from these devices. Amen. <clears throat> Amen. Even, even professionals tell you now, you, you ought to turn them off at night. Don't mind some people want to go to work like this. <laughs> One eye open, the other closed. This thing done running all night, all night. No, okay. that's why the certain time you should be texting folks unless it's some kind of emergency. Get going on and call them. But the, all, all these sending text messages, midnight. They ain't talking about nothing. Come on, I got a few people gonna talk back to me. But sometimes you need to fast from this. Because it's keeping you from hearing God. Lord, I'm available. Watch this. Lord, I'm available. Lord, I'm available. 
Who that got to say I sound? Who that car shield? <laughs> Home flooring experts. Say the opposite all. How you a <laughs> Talk back to me if you can. I believe I'm older than this. But you got to stand sometimes from that. And can I help you with this? Sometimes you're going to have to, when you're available for God, you're going to have to fast from folk. What you say? You're going to have to fast from folk. There are some people, and can I, now, now, now I'm going down a highway where I know I'm about to on interstate tying up. I 75, so it got a whole lot of lanes. But I'm going down in I 85. Watch this. Sometimes the folk you need to fast from is your family. Yeah. You got family or be jealous of you because you're striving to be available for God and not them. You got family that'll be upset with you because you're using your resources for the kingdom and won't give them all your money. You got family that say, you prayed for your friend at the church. I told you I'm going through and you didn't pray for me because you weren't in the line for me to pray for you. Your mind was on believing God. Your mind was on thanking God your sugar daddy. <laughs> so I'm a call it preacher. I'm a call it woman of God. I'm a call it man of God. I'm a, oh, I know they gonna get a prayer through. Show sure will for your mind. Amen. Sometimes you have to fast from people. Amen. Uh oh. I'm about to go somewhere now. Sometimes you got to fast from church folk. Because Jesus said, everybody say, Lord, Lord, ain't holy. I said, sometimes you got to fast from church people. I like the other way, church folk. <laughs> you got to fast from them. Because there are those who will see you availing yourself for God, and the first thing they'll say, oh, who they think they are. They think they're so perfect. Ain't nobody perfect. I know I'm not. I know she's not. I know he's not. That's why we are availing ourselves to the one who is perfect. Because I ain't perfect. I don't care how many battles they carry. <laughs> you got to fast from You got to fast from some Christian channels. I know I'm stepping out there this morning, but I'm going on out there because since I'm out there, I might as well stay out there because I'm available. See, I'm availing myself by speaking the truth of God's word. Not, not your truth, not my truth, his truth. Sometimes you got to avail yourself, and that means fasting from some of this stuff we watch on some of these here Christian channels. Especially when they try to get you to send them everything that God has allowed you to have. And they say, send it, send it to them. So God will bless you. Your blessing is not in nobody else's hand but God's hand. That's why you ought to avail yourself to the one who has blessed you and brought you thus far. So sometimes you got to fast from church folk. Let me get done. Watch what he says the next thing. After fasting, watch what Nehemiah says here now. Y'all will still with me? Yeah. He says that after fasting, he prayed yeah. before the God of heaven. Mm -hmm. Let me tell you, when you're going to avail yourself for the glory of God, you got to learn how to pray. Yeah. I say you got to learn how to pray. Now watch this. Learn how to pray don't mean saying many words. Right. Or long words. Yeah. Learning how to pray means that you know how to communicate with God. Right. Right. And it ain't nothing but Lord have mercy. Yeah. You just pray. Yeah. And it ain't nothing but Lord, I can't make it by myself. Yeah. You just pray. Yeah. Come on. All you need to take on in that in Jesus' name. Yeah. And then begin to thank him. Yes. Because then you're believing that he's going to help you to make it. Because you let him know you can't do it on your own. Amen. Nehemiah said, I'm available for God. 
Now, I'm not going to take the time because I can walk you through some other chapters in Nehemiah. But this is the opening for us to get an understanding. As we are opening the first Sunday in this year of 2024, we need to open up with are we available to God. Because he wants your availability. He already knows what you're able to do. Because as I forestated, God the one enabled you to do it. He made it possible for you to have the gift and to have the talent. So now, to have the job, to have the finance, to have whatever it is you have. But now, the question on the floor is, are you available for the glory of God? And if you're going to be available, you got to learn when you hear these distressful things, things that are going on, that, and, and we, it, it should cause us to weep. It should cause us to mourn. We got to know how it's time to fast and it's time to pray. It's time to fast and it's time to pray. And it didn't just get time to fast and pray. It's been fasting and praying time. What we have done, some of us, we slacked up off of fasting and praying because then nobody called for the fast. Ain't nobody got to call for no fast for you and I. Jesus' word called us to fast. Why are you waiting on another fast? This year we're going to start at 30 days of fasting. Oh, come on, somebody. The word tells us to fast. And we just want to fast because of that so that we are still available. Amen. Now, one thing we are doing in this ministry, we have our mind fast. And it, and it started and it goes until we see Jesus. Because the mind is the place of conception. We think things out before we carry them out. So we need to make sure our mind is right. We should be fasting for our mind by, watch this, in putting into our minds. First off, if you're going to get a renewed mind, your mind must belong to the one who does the renewing. you got to give your mind to the Lord. Amen. Why do you think you hear folks say, Lord, help me, I'm about to lose my mind. I don't know about you, but I've been there. Well, I had to say that. Lord, I'm about to lose my mind. I said, Lord, I can't make it. I need you to help me with my mind. You sit up four o'clock in the morning, looking in a dark room, and your eyes have got big as owls. <laughs> you about to lose it? I said, Lord, help me with my mind. I want to be available for you. See, we can't be available if we don't lost our mind, because then we all over the place. But you need, you need a focus mind. Amen. Second Timothy, or first Timothy, one and seven says, God's not giving us a spirit of fear, but of love, power, and watch this, a sound mind. That means a mind of discipline, a sound mind. Every now and then, and especially those of us, second Timothy, no, one and seven, especially those of us who are getting a little older, we need a mind of discipline. We need to say, Lord, help me with my mind. And uh, I know see some of y'all grinning and, and smiling at me because it happens. Yeah. Ain't nobody saying that. I, 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 I'm not as old as, as some, but I'm not as young as most. And I have to say, Lord, help me with my mind. I walked in one room and had to stand there and turn around and serve. And then, now you go, Lord, and tell me if you're going to help me, that's how you help me. Then I had to come out of that room, walk back in the other room that I was in before I went to that room. And to see that I remember what I was going to that room for. Because <laughs> I want to stay available. I can't, I can't serve God with my mind gone. Come on. <laughs> I'm with you. Availability versus ability. Now that's the, that's the word. That's the word. Watch this. Pastor, don't you have something to say? Mm -mm. Because that's enough for us to think on, to chew on, to digest, and then regurgitate. To say, am I available? Because I tell you this, as I close my tablet, you know y'all got the electrical tablet, but as I close my tablet, I want to say this to you. God doesn't need us. We need, we need him. Amen. I'm going to say one more again. God doesn't need us. We need him. Because he was God praying to you and I coming to the planet. He was God before your mother met your father. He was God. So we need him. And because we know we need him, we need to know that we need to be available. And say, Lord, I'm available to you. Come on with me. Say, Lord, I'm available to you. We open up with it for a reason today. Because what God is showing us is through his word and through he, the Holy Spirit, is that the church got to be available.
to him. And then watch God use you for his glory. I said, watch God use you for his glory. And, and, and that's not to lessen what you're going through. We're not telling you to be in denial. But what we are telling you is if you would avail yourself to God, he'll bring you through. He'll bring you out. He'll see you through. It ain't the going through, it's the coming out. But are you available? And say, Lord, bring me out. Yes, I'm hurting. Yes, there's been death. Yes, there's been sickness. Yes, there's been other things that happen. But Lord, I'm available. I won't let none of it stop me from being available to you. Use my brokenness to help somebody else know that you can make them complete. Use my sadness to let somebody else know that you will make them glad and give them joy unspeakable. I'm available. That's why we shouldn't be afraid to tell folk what we've gone through. Because part of availability says, I don't mind telling my story. Now, telling the story don't mean you have to tell everything about the story. Just tell the story enough that they know that if it had not been for the Lord, you wouldn't have been able to tell them the story. Amen. You got to say, my story is empty. And I am available. 